Hello everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. It is Monday, September 7th and Labor Day, so I hope if you have the day off, you're out there enjoying it. But I'm here, so I'm going to get you all caught up on today's top headlines and get you caught up from over the weekend, which includes some good news for Browns fans and how your pup could be a superstar in Toledo. But before we dive too deep into any of that, let me get you all caught up on the latest coronavirus data. Now, I say this every week, but as a reminder, numbers on Monday tend to be a little bit lower due to a lag in reporting. But come Wednesday, we should get a more clear picture of what's happening. But here are the numbers as they stand right now. In the last 24 hours, we have seen 778 new cases of coronavirus in Ohio compared to the average of 1,061. There have been 17 coronavirus-related deaths in the last 24 hours compared to the 21-day average of 21. Hospitalizations look to be pretty down uh, in the last 24 hours. We've seen 46 compared to 75. And there has only been one ICU admission reported since yesterday. And that average for the past 21 days is 12. And the Ohio investigative unit has cited Jeds on campus for violating coronavirus health orders. Jeds was cited for improper conduct after agents made a visit and saw customers standing in large groups throughout the building with no measures in place to enforce social distancing. Three other bars were cited in the state, including Poor Michael's Bar in Hamilton County, as well as Elite and Dahlia Nightclub, which are both in Columbus. So these cases will go before the Ohio Liquor Control Commission for any potential penalties, which could be fines or they could have their liquor licenses suspended or revoked. And three-year-old Braylon Noble was reported missing by his mother on Friday after she says he disappeared from their Hunter's Ridge apartment on Gibraltar Heights Drive in South Toledo. The family says Braylon is nonverbal, and at the time he went missing, he was wearing a red and white Mickey Mouse t-shirt. The search has continued today after police and search crews looked all weekend for the three-year-old, but they aren't giving up. Today's search was expanded to a three-mile radius spanning across Airport, Arlington, and Bern. Anyone 18 years or older wishing to join the search for Braylon can do so by going to the Hunter's Ridge apartment complex. A command post has been set up by the White Gazebo in the park for volunteers. So if you do plan to go out, you're asked to bring masks, gloves, and walking sticks, if possible, to help you look through the woods near the apartment complex. If you aren't able to join in the search but still want to help, you can bring water and snacks to the volunteer command post. And anyone who sees or hears anything about Braylon should contact police immediately. Volunteers are reminded not to touch anything they find. The FBI is offering a $5,000 reward for anyone with information and to follow ongoing coverage of the search head over to our website, WTOL.com. And President Donald Trump tweeted about Big Ten football Sunday morning, hinting that it could return but may lose teams from several states, blaming governor's restrictions. Big Ten football is really looking good, but may lose Michigan, Illinois, and Maryland because of those governor's ridiculous lack of interest or political support, Trump said on Twitter. He continued by suggesting that the conference could continue without those states, saying they will play without them. The Big Ten presidents voted 11-3 to in the beginning of August to postpone the season until spring out of concerns surrounding COVID-19. A court filing from the Big Ten didn't show how each university voted, but according to the Associated Press, Iowa, Nebraska, and Ohio State all voted against postponing the fall football season. The president tweeted earlier this week about the Big Ten saying he had a productive conversation with Kevin Warren, the commissioner of the conference, about starting the season again. Trump said they reached the one-yard line in their discussion of resuming college football in the fall. And a statement from the Big Ten said the conference and its task force are exhausting every resource to help student-athletes get back to playing the sports they love at the appropriate time in the safest and healthiest way possible. The Big Ten was the first of the Power Five to announce a decision on the season, and they were followed by the Pac-12 Conference. But some good news for Browns fans over the weekend. Fans will be able to attend Browns games this month, although it will be much smaller than what we're used to. Governor Mike DeWine said on Saturday that his administration has granted a special variance allowing the Browns to let 6,000 fans into their first two home games of the season, starting with the home opener on September 17th. 
Under the guidelines of the variance, no more than 1,500 fans will be allowed in each of the four quarters of First Energy Stadium, and spectators must use their designated entrance while also practicing social distancing and wearing face masks at all times. This marks the first time fans will be allowed into a Northeast Ohio pro sporting event since March. The home opener will be on Thursday night football against the Cincinnati Bengals, while the second game affected by the variance will be September 27th against the Washington football team. But a statement from DeWine has given fans hope that the variants could be extended in the future and we will be sure to keep you updated on any new information and before i go let me share this bit of fun news with you if you have a dog or cat that you think is just too cute for words they could be turned into a giant work of art your pet is the chance to be the next superstar of toledo with his or her own mural and it's all for a great cause and what is sure to be an extremely popular competition humane ohio is looking for two furry models to be the subjects of a mural on the group's new building in west toledo for a 25 dollars donation you could submit a photo of your cat or dog to be entered and once all the photos are submitted people will vote at a cost of one dollar a vote on which animal's fluffy face should be featured on the approximately 74 by 18 foot wall every dollar that comes in is going to go to covering the cost of this project and everything else goes right back into humane ohio helping our area animals Submissions will be open for one week, followed by a 10-day voting period before one dog and one cat are named the winners. But that is all I have for you today. For more of your top headlines, make sure to check us out nightly at 5, 6, and 11 on Channel 11, of course. And if you want more of these videos, make sure you like the video, subscribe to our channel, then you'll get a little alert to your phone whenever we have a really good video popping up. But with all of that, I hope you get out there and you enjoy the rest of your Labor Day.